The struggle between Russia and Ukraine has been one of the leading issues of chaos in recent years. Russia has pressured Ukraine immensely, causing mass destruction to force its invasive campaign. But Ukraine is doing its best to stand its ground. It seems things will take a turn for the Ukraine-Russia war as Ukraine got their hands on some French Caesar artillery guns. But what are these artillery guns capable of? Can they help Ukraine fend off Russia's advanced weaponry? Stay tuned to find out today. The weapons that Ukraine got their hands on were Caesar's self-propelled howitzer. That's a name that doesn't really get off the tongue. So, what are they exactly? Self-propelled howitzers are artillery systems that move on wheels or tracks. They are quite mobile, which is their greatest advantage over towed howitzers. They are quite mobile, which is their greatest advantage over towed howitzers. These artillery systems are employed to provide battle support. They typically shoot at things that are not in their line of sight. They can, however, shoot at point-blank range if required. Self-propelled artillery has been around for quite some time. They are continually changing and improving. These armored systems can not only defend the crew from hostile fire, but also launch artillery strikes on the adversary that is as strong as regular stationary howitzers. Let's take a look at the construction and history of the Caesar artillery system. The Caesar artillery system is a 155mm self-propelled howitzer developed by Nexter Systems in Hangenbeet in France, partnership with Lore Industry. The French army ordered the first five artillery systems delivered in June 2003 for technical and operational assessment. Giat was granted a contract in December 2004 for 72 Caesar SPH to equip eight French Army ground artillery batteries to replace TRF-1 towed howitzers. Caesar went into production in June of 2006. In April 2007, the first vehicle was sent to the French Army for long-term testing. In July 2008, the French Army received the first Caesar serial system. By the end of 2008, seven other artillery systems had been delivered. The Caesar was the first mass-produced truck-based howitzer. The unique idea of mounting a heavy howitzer on the chassis of a military vehicle was finally accomplished. Other nations have followed suit, creating their artillery systems mounted on trucks. The Caesar 6-6 artillery system was built on the previous 155AM F3 cannon which was built on the chassis of the AMX-13 light tank. The Caesar SPH was outfitted with all of the technologies required for independent employment, including a cabin to shield six crew from shrapnel and small arms, an initial stockpile of 16 rounds, and gadgets for navigation and ballistic calculations and command. The system was created primarily to offer quick fire assistance. The combat weight of the Caesar 6 artillery system is less than 18 tons. Dimensions, 10 meters in length, 3.7 meters in height, and 2.55 meters in width. Four to five individuals can operate the system. The modified Caesar 8-8 system has a fighting weight of 32 tons. This howitzer system is 12.3 meters long, 3.1 meters tall, and 2.8 meters broad. This system needs a crew of five. The French self-propelled artillery has a 155 millimeter barrel that is 52 calibers long and can fire six to eight bullets per minute in long range fire or three shots in 15 seconds in a high speed fire. Nexter and EADS Defense Electronics collaborated to create the computerized fast hit fire control system. Russia will have a hard time now that Ukraine has its hands on such weaponry. The Caesar can shoot at protected and unprotected targets, construct barriers to stop enemy armored units, move through minefields and barricades, 
and conceal or light regions. The self-propelled device may fire traditional high-explosive fragmentation or next-generation projectiles with greater precision and efficiency. The French Army ordered the first five artillery systems delivered in June 2003 for technical and operational testing. Giant was granted a contract in December 2004 to provide 72 Caesar SPH to eight French Army ground artillery batteries to replace TRF-1 towed howitzers. Caesar began manufacturing in June 2006. The first vehicle was sent to the French Army in April 2007 for long-term testing. The French Army's Ogre projectile is an anti-tank and fragmentation bullet designed against weak sites such as command posts, artillery batteries, light armored vehicles, and logistical infrastructure. The Ogre Ammo comprises 63 explosives, each with its own self-destruct mechanism. Bombs can breach armor up to 90 millimeters thick. A salvo of six Ogre shells releases 378 bombs, enough to cover a three-acre area at 35 kilometers. Smart submunitions can discharge guided projectiles against tanks and other medium and heavily armored vehicles. Next to ammunition and intertechnique from France, as well as Bofors from Sweden, created these. The guided missile may travel up to 34 kilometers, carrying two clever anti-tank submunitions. The bullet flight profile from top lets you target the tank's roof, which is generally more susceptible than considerably better armored sides and front. Base shells extend the firing range by filling the vacuum and lowering turbulence behind the projectile without sacrificing accuracy. Projectiles with an Extended Range Full Barrel Base, or ERFBBB, have a maximum range of 42 kilometers. The French Army's self-propelled howitzer is linked to the Thales Land and Joint Systems Atlas, C4I, which stands for Command, Control, Communication, and Intelligence Artillery System. Onboard terminals allow the system to communicate and control the firing sequence in real time, including submitting requests for fire support and transferring firing orders based on the kind of target, type of ammunition, and gun availability. Caesar prototypes were built on a Daimler-Benz Unabog 612x6 series chassis that Saudi Arabia had ordered. Renault Trucks Defense Sherpa 5666 is equipped with systems built for France and Thailand. Sherpa 5 has a 6.7 ton capacity. The Danish Armed Forces Caesar 88 howitzers are installed on the four-axle chassis of a Tatra Force vehicle. In contrast to the Renault trucks, which are 6x6, the Caesar howitzers are 8x8. Caesar 6x6 has a range of 600 kilometers without refueling and a peak speed of 100 kilometers per hour. On soft terrain, the centralized pressure distribution system allows for a top speed of 50 kilometers per hour. The system is powered by a six-cylinder diesel engine with 240 horsepower and a power-to-rate ratio of 3.6 horsepower per torque. The cargo compartment of the C-130 Hercules airplane can transport Caesar. It may also be transported on the A-400, IL-76, and C-17. Surprisingly, the Caesar ACS can fire six bullets at once for two minutes, assuring greater survival. The shielded cab can also be outfitted with extra armor up to Stanag 4569 Level 2 protection. A highly innovative and advanced Caesar SPH system will undoubtedly aid our armed forces in their combat against the occupiers allowing for even more efficient destruction of the invader's personnel and armored vehicles. And this will bring us closer to victory. In response to whether Europe should give heavy weapons and tanks, Macron stated in the interview that each nation selects the type of delivery but must tread carefully around the red line. We must assist the Ukrainians to the greatest extent possible, but we must never be co-belligerent. He stressed. 
Macron further elaborated on the ethical weight of interacting with his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, because of his denial of realities. However, he emphasized that he did not want to abandon this stance since it was critical for Europeans to be present at the table to establish peace in Europe. In addition to France, Ukraine has been getting a lot of support from other countries that don't approve of Russia's stance. President Joe Biden requested Congress to authorize $33 billion in extra aid to Ukraine, including $20 billion in military and security support. The plan would include $5 billion in direct supplies from U.S. military inventories, billions more in financing for Ukraine, and stock replenishment for NATO members. The Pentagon announced that it had shipped dozens of M777 howitzers and 155mm rounds to Ukraine, with U.S. forces giving training at unknown locations beyond Ukraine's borders. Mr. Biden was scheduled to tour a Lockheed Martin manufacturing site that produces Javelin missiles, which are part of the weapons given by the U.S., as well as anti-aircraft stinger systems, ammo, and body armor. Norway's Prime Minister Jonas Gahr Storr that the country might consider delivering heavy weaponry to Ukraine and the 4,000 anti-tank weapons and 100 air defense missiles previously sent. The Dutch Defense Ministry declared that a limited number of self-propelled howitzers with 155mm guns, the Dutch Army's biggest weapon, would be delivered to Ukraine, but would first undergo training outside the nation. According to local media, Denmark has given an additional $90 million in military supplies to Ukraine, including M113 armed personnel carriers, anti-tank mines, and mortar rounds. It seems that all of the world's powers have their hands on deck when it comes to supporting Ukraine against the military expansion of Russia. But things might get ugly, as a CIA official stated that Russia might go as far as to detonate many nukes onto Ukraine if Russia feels that it needs to back off from its expansion. This could mean widespread death and destruction. It could most probably ensue in World War III. We hope that the Russia-Ukraine situation gets resolved peacefully and that the world lives to see another day without war. And that's pretty much it for today. Will Ukraine defeat Russia in the wake of the increasing invasion? We aren't sure, but we hope the situation turns out in the best interests of both countries. Tune in to future videos to find out more. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. With that said, we bid you farewell, so goodbye and have a great time.